it is time to delve into the architectural and urban scene here in the Sultanate of Oman and also the Urban Hackathon 2.0 and much more in this arena. And what better way to do this than speaking with the specialists in the field. Marwan Al Mahri is an architect, a lecturer and also an urban planner. Welcome to the studio Marwan. Thank you so much Ahmed, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for this opportunity. We're happy to have you here. So Oman Think Urban, OTU, is preparing to launch the Oman Urban Hackathon 2.0. Can you share a bit of details on that? Yes, sure. So even before we talk about the Urban Hackathon, let's talk about OTU, Oman Think Urban. So basically, Oman Think Urban, it works like a th uh, think tank, right? Which basically means it's a research uh, center. We do different uh, studies in urban planning and we're mostly concerned about the ethno-urbanism technology and ethno-urbanism science. So basically, this is the relationship between the people and the city. We cannot have cities without people and people are important element in any city. And cities should be evolving in order to provide the luxury life and the, the quality of life for people. So in OTU, Oman Think Urban, we are basically doing that. We are collecting data, we are doing some experiments, um, we're creating theories. Uh, and also part of that, we also do sometimes like workshops, online workshops, uh, physical workshops as well. We do some lectures, uh, we invite uh, guest uh, key lecturers in different uh, disciplines of architectural engineering and urban planning. Um, also, we have a business arm as well and this business arm actually funds our projects so we only have that only to have our uh, theoretical part and our research that we are doing to keep us moving and to keep it also doing that and we are proudly i'm proudly uh, happy to say that we are almost the only organization in the whole uh, sultanate of oman that actually is doing that and we have this uh, think tank in, in urban planning and architectural uh, engineering we deliver many things, and one of them is the hackathon. We did Oman uh, Urban Hackathon last year, and we are doing the uh, Oman Urban Hackathon this year as well, which is in its second version. Yes, so the second version, let's go into a bit more detail. What do you have in the second version? What is different in the second version than the first one? Yes, so last year, uh, our, uh, the Oman Urban Hackathon, it was with collaboration with the EU office, the European Union. Uh, they from Riyadh, they came from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and we organized with them this uh, hackathon. Basically, we had participants from many uh, different uh, disciplines related to, architect to architecture, design, and urban planning, of course, and any person who has this sense of um, designing and creativity. So we're not only aiming architects and professionals, we even aim people with great minds, beautiful minds who can actually lead and have a, a healthy change in the urban scene here in Oman. Uh, we had participants almost, uh, I don't remember how many, I think six or seven groups, each group around four or five people. Um, last year, we gave them different locations in Oman, in Masqat specifically, and those locations were the main their main task. And the hackathon ran for two uh, days, 48 hours. In those two days, the all, all the participants, they had to develop those locations that were given to them. They have to develop them uh, architecturally uh, for, from an urban planning perspective. They, and each one of those locations had its own theme, right? So some themes were, they were related more to the na nature of the people. Some of those locations were more into entertainment. Uh, some other uh, projects were related to sports entertainment. Um, and I am also proudly happy to say that my group, which I was part of, we've won the first prize, alhamdulillah, last year. Uh, our, uh, our project was to develop the uh, stadium, st a Sib stadium in uh, Wilayat Sib. So we added some uh, creative uh, elements to the stadium. We made it more multifunctional uh, building. So it's not only dedicated for sports. It was also dedicated for, uh, like, let's say, social life to make people, to bring people together and basically this is our theme not, not theme this is our main logo in uh, Oman Think Urban is that people make spaces right so we cannot make just with our expertise with our uh, experiences and everything we just go and design places we need to ask people right we need to check their needs we need to check their requirements what do they need people of today 
their requirements are so much different than people 50 years back, right? We cannot uh, just assume people will need that. We need to ask them. So that was the main uh, stream in our uh, in hackathon number uh, one, which was last year. Um, in hackathon this year, we have uh, also we have different locations. Pretty much it's the same scenario. We'll be having uh, several locations. Um, the most unique thing about this uh, version of the hackathon is that the locations were uh, given to us by the municipality of Muscat, Muscat municipality. And those locations are actually places where Muscat municipality is actually planning to do something. So those are the study areas from them. So, and they, they have already the budget. They already have the, the locations, of course. They have the main streams, what they have the idea what they want to do there, but they need the design concept, right? So we'll be taking that and employing that into our uh, hackathon. We'll be giving that to the participants as well. Um, and we'll check how they, uh, we will see how creative they are in order to find solutions to those locations. And inshallah, hopefully by, uh, let's say, how many, uh, like how much time they will need in order to implement that, right? Because as, as I said, we are a think tank, so we will be d giving ideas, uh, innovative uh, solutions, but we don't want for that just to be put on a shelf, right? We need that to be implemented actually in the real life. And OTU, we actually, we have some projects that have been implemented. We have uh, some uh, projects with the government, with the private sector as well. And also even we have some projects outside of Oman. We have some projects uh, running in the United Arab Emirates and also in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as well. So we are, we are kind of leading the urban scene and the arch architectural scene in both streams, the creating ideas and uh, hosting those ideas and also implementing them. And Oman Urban Hackathon is our biggest highlight of the year, inshallah. Yes, we hope that, inshallah, goes successful as inshallah. planned for. Congratulations for the win last year Thank on you. the Seed the Development Stadium. Yes. And for this year, how can people participate? Like, that's a very important point. Yes. Let's say I want to join a man Correct. urban hackathon. Correct. How can I Correct. do so? The reg actually, register the registration is actually uh, going on until the 7th of July. Um, it's a basically a group-based uh, registration uh, system. You have to register with your group, uh, group members. Uh, as well, there is a small uh, addition that is different from the last year. Last year, we just had a link for people to register and they just filled the form and they're like kindly initially accepted. This time, we, are, uh, we created a challenge, a mini small challenge. We also provided some locations in Muscat. So they have to download this task or this challenge and they have to solve it and they have to attach it with their registration form. So that way it will give us some kind of uh, idea and in terms of uh, their graphical uh, skills and also how those people and how, how those uh, groups they think and how much creative they are. Because we have lots of participants last year, they reached almost 200 or 300. So in order as a shortlisting uh, strategy, we provided this uh, small challenge. But this is nothing to be afraid of <laughs> because we got so many questions like, uh, is it hard? Is it easy? Is it necessary? How, how much time do we need it? Is this the actual hackathon? This is just a part of the registration. It doesn't have to be so much like rocket science. Exactly. It, it just for us to test your knowledge, how you can describe a solution, you can create a mood board, you can create anything in order to uh, register your uh, group and then provide this task as uh, like an architectural poster and uh, that's it. Yeah. And inshallah, we will have some filtration uh, uh, stages later on in order to get to the top 10 and the actual hackathon starts on the 1st of September and it will run for two days so 1st of September and 2nd of September this is actually the two days of the hackathon where the participants the selected participants the groups will be given the new uh, locations and they will start uh, digging into the solutions amazing Inshallah. now I do want to take you to another dimension Marwan which is I want to know more about your personal journey to becoming an architect. <laughs> right. How well. did you become an architect and what inspired you to do so? Okay. Well, and then, all right. So let's go deep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Not deep, old. <laughs> Too many years back. So 
well, I wouldn't say that I'm one of those people who uh, like being a child dreaming of, of buildings and designing uh, uh, and paying attention to buildings and etc. Once I got into my university, I studied in the United Arab Emirates University in uh, Al Ain City. I, the only thing that I knew that I will be doing something related to engineering, right? Because my grades allowed me to do that. But I did not like think that I will be choosing architectural approach. Uh, in in that university, we have in the foundation year, we take courses from all disciplines, from all, all specializations, right? Yes. So I took something from mechanical, from electrical, from um, civil engineering, some courses related to designing as well. And I think... I found out myself more li- like taking over by the architectural scene. I like the buildings and I like the, the, the blueprints and how uh, students were hanging their works on, on different posters. So I thought that will be, okay, I think I can do that. Even though I'm not a painter, I, I, am, I did not do like any amazing drawing work, but I think I thought that that will be my approach. And I just selected it. Alhamdulillah, I, I, I very much liked it. Um, we had some courses related to urban uh, planning. So that was also an, like a mind blowing discipline for me is that architecture and engineering is basically you design a building. So you're inside a building and that's your scope. But in urban planning, you are designing a whole city, a whole neighborhood, a whole town. So it's a bigger scale here. And there are many elements related to urban planning. So it's not only um, like a bunch of masses connected all together with street networks and that's it. There, you, you need to think about the people, right? You need to think about the person because the city, again, it's all uh, evolved around the, around the person and its needs. Um, also, urban planning has political layers. It has cultural layers. It has um, religious uh, layers as well. So you need to take all of that into considerations. The Chinese culture is totally different than, let's say, Bahraini culture. So their needs... The, so the two different societies will have two different needs and you need to respect that in order to design the city, in order to allocate different land uses and how to make this relationship. Because the main goal of any discipline in engineering, it is happiness of people and providing quality of life to them. I'm an electrical engineer in order to find solutions for uh, the problems related to electricity to make people's lives easier. I'm a mechanical engineer. I am doing that discipline in order to use the equipment and the other experiments in order to Im- improving people's life and make it easier. And architectural engineering is doing the same and urban planner doing the same. So after I finished my uh, bachelor in architectural engineering, uh, I thought, my, okay, now let's do the, the market thing. Let's, let's go for a job hunt. I applied here and there. Uh, and then I got this opportunity to teach Okay, uh, as an instructor in the vocational college, um, I never imagined myself standing in front of students and delivering a lecture or a lesson. Um, but I actually, I, I loved it. I liked it. Uh, and I was very good uh, in that discipline, in that work. I got so many uh, like feedback from, from people who are, were evaluating me, from the, uh, from the administration, from the students themselves. So, yeah, uh, then I completed my master's degree as well in the United uh, Kingdom, University of Bath, uh, super amazing city for those who love architecture, a, re- a big time recommendation to visit that city. Um, that's the city, Ahmed, where they filmed Bridgerton, if you know, wow. on, on Netflix. Yes, <laughs> it was amazing living in that city and some shooting were actually happening there while I was doing my master's there. So I finished, I came back to Oman and I started my journey in uh, University of Technology and Applied Sciences, Architectural uh, Engineering. So, and then I got introduced and I, I joined the, the Society of OTU, Oman Think Urban. They were like the highlight of, of urban uh, planning scene in Oman. And the community has more than a thousand people from different Uh, disciplines. We're talking about architecture, graphic design. So I thought, yes, this is also a place that I want to join and to to get benefit from. And there, and to get to know to Oman as well, because uh, this is, I'm pretty much new in Muscat. This is my like 
third year going to my fourth. So through OTU and through other people who are specialists in the architecture and urban planning, I got to know Muscat more and more and the architectural scene there as well. Mm. Now, what do you think about the recent developments here in Oman when it comes to the urban planning scene? Yes, yes. So recently, when the Ministry of Housing became Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning, they actually did lots of uh, great deal of work in terms of the urban planning. Um, they have introduced those structure plans for different cities. So, for example, the Greater Muscat Structure Plan, the Greater, Mus- the Greater Salala Structure Plan. So what do we mean by structure plan? A structure plan is basically a study of the current situation of the urban scene in a specific city and then trying to find the, solu- uh, the problems, the challenges, the threats, and then finding a solutions for future, uh, like let's say problems in terms of urban planning uh, to see the strength as well of that city um, and also to see what kind of opportunities in the future can be developed in the terms of urban planning. So those structure plans, uh, they will, basically it's like a guideline for a city how to be better, how to improve its its infrastructure as well. There are many elements, there are many uh, as well uh, principles to be implemented in that structure plan. Uh, maybe some people say, okay, we heard about the greater Muscat structure plan, we are hearing about the greater uh, Salala structure plan, okay, where is the impl- implementation? It will not take overnight, the change will not come in a in day or a two. Generally, structure plans, they take around 10 to 15, sometimes based on the scale of the city, 20 years to be implemented. So it's a guideline. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's like, uh, let's say it's a low book that you, you have, it's, um, it's regulations, rules that you have to follow in order to reach the optimum uh, solution. One of the benefits of the structure plan of Muscat is, for example, uh, Sultan Haytham City. So this is one uh, city that we are all proud. This is the first city of its kind that actually implementing the new urbanism principles and how to make people's life easier. It talks, it, it presents and showcases the different land uses and how it's all connected together. We have the 10 or 15 minutes community uh, core neighborhood. So within your neighborhood, you have your houses uh, near to you have a place where you can go and entertain, for example, parks or even different cultural centers, you have museums, even the place of work should be near to you. And all you, most of your journeys for commuting, you can do it by bus, by public transportation or by walking. And it's actually achieving the, the sustainability goal with its three pillars, the economical sustainability, the uh, social sustainability, it will make people better and bring them closer, uh, more job opportunities will be provided there. And of course, the environmental aspect. We're uh, trying to limit the, uh, the carbon emissions, the, the harmful gases emissions as well. We are trying to, with the public transportation, like rather than having 30 people going into 30 different cars from one point to another, you can put all those 30 people in one bus, right? What do you believe is the role that governments play when it comes to the scene of architecture and urban planning? Yes. So, like, I would also to I would also thank uh, Professor Mahmoud Al Wahabi and uh, Miss Aida Riyamiya. Those are the founders of OTU, and this is their vision uh, to create this kind of uh, let's say architectural and urban planning trend. So, with their expertise from outside of Oman, and they brought them back here to Oman in order to benefit the country, and because of their efforts, their the, the the architectural scene and the urban scene is changing and improving here and there. Um, because of their efforts, we have many uh, contracts and we have many projects going on with the governmental uh, sector. And the role of governmental sector here is uh, basically creating guidelines, right? So we cannot just do things. We need to follow guidelines, certain guidelines. So, for example, the uh, municipalities and the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning, they are in the aim and they are in this run to create those guidelines and uh, the building codes in order to elevate the the, the, uh, the level of architecture, the, the quality of architecture itself. Uh, like, for example, um, LEED, if you heard about this LEED, this is, um, it's an American organization that accreditates buildings 
with different uh, like how much scores this building have it will get a rating in yes term. and i'm happy to share that ocec our man yes, convention exhibition exactly. center is lead certified it's a lead certified exactly and we have other buildings as well but why do we need an uh, like an abroad uh, body to certify internal buildings in Oman. We can create our own uh, rating system. So, and that actually what uh, the Ministry of uh, Housing and Urban Planning actually uh, they are doing and they're aiming in order to create our own rating uh, certification system in order to certify and to give um, uh, rating for our buildings in terms of sustainability. And this is very important because you will have different classes of buildings. So some buildings, they actually approve everything. They are eco-friendly. They are, uh, let's say, save energy. They are more uh, creating the social uh, sustainability and etc. And of course, since we are doing this uh, carbon net, uh, carbon zero net. Um, net zero. Exactly that one. We are doing that and we're aiming for the future to, to achieve this uh, strategy. So it's very important important also to include the architectural scene and the buildings into that strategy as well. Marwan, I appreciate you being here. Is there anything else that you'd like to share just as we conclude this interview? Yes, thank you so much, Ahmed. Thank you so much for having me. And I just encourage everyone to, to, to be more involved in the architectural scene. Luckily, in the last three, four, five years, the architectural scene has uh, flourished in, in Oman. People started to understand the importance of urban planning to design our cities and also to maintain and to uh, appreciate the buildings. And they always, uh, I, I'll just uh, like ask one question for the people to take back to them and just to think what is your favorite place in Muscat so for those residents of Muscat people who visit Muscat what is your favorite place in Muscat a place that you think you have an emotional connection and why just take this question for you answer it between you and your friends and you will find the beauty in the relationship between you and the place and the buildings inshallah well on that note, and even answer in the comments on this reel, what is your favorite place that you like to visit in Muscat that you view from an architectural perspective and that you admire a lot as well? Marwan Al-Mahri, an architect and an urban planner and also a lecturer. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you.